Unfulfilled because God brought you here to fulfill a part of His big picture, and you are not fulfilling it, means you're living a wasted life. When they are talking about being a messenger of God, a servant of God, then it has to do with your fulfilling the will of God as it concerns you. So, in other words, any person on planet Earth came under the ambience of an eternal purpose. That purpose existed before you entered your mother's womb. God knew you before you entered your mother's womb. That's what Jeremiah chapter 1 says. And if you have an understanding of it, a discovery of your purpose on earth has a lot to do because that determines your destiny. And your destiny means where you're going and how you're going to end. The end of a thing is better than the beginning Ecclesiastes chapter 7 verse 8. So the, the, when you're talking about the labor room of fasting, we have said that it is a place of bathing assignments. Every assignment has a bath place and that is what it is. So if fasting and praying, the labor room of fasting and praying helps you to bring out your authentic self the assignment within you, the work within you, work is releasing inner energy, work and job, they are not the same thing, job is what you do to be paid, but work has been in you before before anything, God brought you to planet Earth. he put work in you, your work has to do with eternal purpose, so the work is what comes from the inside of you that gives you satisfaction when you do. I pray you will discover the work in you. You discover your eternal purpose in God and not only to discover it, to birth it. So the labor room of fasting and prayer helps to birth. Jesus went to the wilderness for 40 days and 40 nights to birth his assignment, to birth his mission. And Luke chapter 4 verse 14 says, by the time he returned from the wilderness of fasting and prayer, from that Bet place from that labor room. He says he was now full of the power of the Holy Spirit and his fame spread abroad. So you, oh, that's the first segment we did. The second segment is the labor room of fasting and prayer brings you to a place of divine guardians. Isaiah chapter 58 verse 6, he said, is this not the fast that I choose? Verse 11 says, that the Lord gives you guardians continually. Once you are always a member in this labor room of fasting and prayer, you won't miss divine guardians. Why? Because there's going to be outbreak of revelations. And once that is outbreak of revelations, it helps you to give you clarity in where you're going. Isaiah chapter 30 verse 21 says, For you shall hear a word behind you say, Go not to the right, not to the left. Don't make mistakes. So God will guide you through his words. He will reveal himself to you through his words. He did that to Samuel. As Samuel was in the labor room. The Bible says in 1 Samuel chapter 3 verse 21. In very clear terms, God appeared in Shiloh again. And revealed himself to Samuel by his word. May your eyes be open to the word of God. May you receive guardians from God. May you receive grace to be a participant, not a spectator, in the labor room of fasting and prayer. So it is absolutely important for you to know that number one, fasting is not optional. Number two, fasting is our covenant obligation. That's the way it works. Number three, fasting gives you and me 
a place in destiny. Number four, we are in the days where Jesus called those days. If you understand this, some people ask, why do I have to fast? Jesus says it is finished. He has paid all the price for me. Well, Jesus is our author and is our finisher. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2, looking unto Jesus. So we look unto him, it's our model. That is the reality. As he is, so we are. First John chapter 4, verse 17. So we follow after him. Matthew chapter 4, verse 19. He said to Peter, follow me and I will make you. I will make you. That's the way it works. So we need to follow him tacitly. Even Paul said, follow me as I follow Jesus. So Jesus is our model, is our example. So whatever he says we do, let's look at what he said about these days, in those days. And these are those days in Matthew chapter 2, verse 18 to 20. For those who say that they don't need to fast now that Jesus has paid the price. Look at what happened here in Rema. Was there a voice heard? Praise God. Lamentations and weeping and great mourning. Rachel, no, Mark chapter, not Matthew, Mark. Mark's gospel. I was reading Matthew. But if you want to read the Matthew account, it's in Matthew 9. Matthew 9, verse 14 to 15 says, then came to him the disciples of John, saying, Why do we and the Pharisees fast oft, but thy disciples fast not? Verse 15, look at the answer of Jesus that has to do with us now. And Jesus said unto them, Can the children of the bride chamber mourn, as long as the bridegroom is with them? But the days will come when the bridegroom shall be taken from them, and then shall they fast. These are the days. Jesus has been taken away. He's in heaven. We are seated with him. These are the days. Then these are the days we need to fast. No argument whether you need to fast or not. Because if you really go into this labor room, you find that it brings you into intimacy with God. Not only intimacy, you see your health spring forth. That's what Isaiah chapter 5, chapter 58, verse 8. Your head springs forth speedily. So fasting helps us, it detoxifies the body in different ways. Fasting helps in different ways. It helps someone to live a very healthy life. And when you're fasting again, it says in that Isaiah chapter 58 verse 8, your righteousness shall spring forth. In other words, that intimacy, you will struggle to live a holy life. Matthew chapter 6 verse 33 says, Seek you first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all other things shall be added unto you. You find out that everything that people are seeking for, that you are now seeking God, you are making God your priority, it will not be a struggle. There is so much intimacy that you love the presence of God more than the presence of man. That's the way it works. Fasting, the labor room of fasting and prayer has no substitute. It's not optional. It's our covenant responsibility if we need to secure our place in destiny. That's the important thing. Because if you miss your destiny space, then you would have led a wasted life. So Jesus never said we shouldn't fast. Look at the Mark, the Mark side of it. Mark chapter 2, verse 18. Mark chapter 2, verse 18. Most of the times I don't get into arguments. Once the Bible is clear about some issues and not even that once you begin to do it you begin to experience it then you will know what it is Mark chapter 2 verse 18 to 20 and the disciples of John and of the Pharisees used to fast and they came and say unto him look at John fasted his disciples fasted it's not optional it's not optional at all David fasted. Those who kept their place in destiny were men and women of the labor room of fasting and prayer. So you have no choice than to enlist there, to be a serious participant there. You'll be securing your place in destiny. I don't think there is anything better than to secure our place in destiny, to occupy till our Messiah comes. And they came and said unto him, Why do the disciples of John 
and of the Pharisees fast, but thy disciples fast not. Verse 19. And Jesus said unto them, Can the children of the bride chamber fast while the bridegroom is with them? As long as they have the bridegroom with them, they cannot fast. Verse 20. But the days will come when the bridegroom shall be taken away from them, and then shall they fast in those days. We are already in those days. So you must understand. Don't be deceived. God can never be mocked. So please, we are in those days. If Jesus fasted to secure his destiny, to secure his mission, and Paul fasted to secure his mission, and Jesus is saying, when the bridegroom is taken away, we are all waiting for the great feast, the dinner, the supper of the marriage supper with the our bridegroom. He is not physically here now, but we need to do the fast. These are the days. Look at the Luke's gospel, Luke's gospel of the same account. In Luke chapter 5, verse 30, Luke chapter 5, Verse 35, 34 and 35 says, And he said unto them, Can you make the children of the bridegroom bride chamber fast while the bridegroom is with them? But the days will come when the bridegroom shall be taken away from them, and then shall they fast in those days. That is the way it works. We are in those days now. And we cannot help but fast. You want to secure your destiny, your place in destiny, you need to fast. You want to get divine guardians, you need to fast. You want your health to spring forth speedily, you need to fast. You want to birth the good things in you, time on time, time on time. You need to fast, you need to pray, you need to get to the labor room and give birth to the glorious things. And I found something that when you're fasting, true fast, Isaiah chapter 58 verse 6, he said, is this not the fast that I want? From verse 1 to verse 5, the Bible talks about the fast that are vain fast that God does not want, self-conceited fast. But the fast that is of God is the fast that does so much, it breaks yokes, it deals with the enemies, it does so much. Once you get into it, the benefits are endless, but you need to get into it first to understand most of these things. Some of them are unspeakable. You can't even be able to alter them because they are too wonderful to be altered. People can't even believe them. They will say it is heresy. So I pray today that you receive the grace. We are in those days to begin to be a participant in this labor room i want to pray for you today that the grace to be a participant in this labor room receive it wherever you are in the matchless name of jesus i decree that every foundational cause in your life that is removing you from the will of god i break them today in the name of jesus every foundational covenant in your life that is evil I break them today in the name of Jesus. Every foundational bondage in your life, I break them today in the name of Jesus. Thou power of deliverance, fall upon this man, this woman, this boy, this girl now, listening to me in the name of Jesus. Every darkness planted in your foundation, I approach them now in the name of Jesus. And every Goliath and every Pharaoh witchcraft, militating against you i command them to die in the name of jesus exodus chapter 22 verse 18 says suffer not a witch to live therefore every serpent in your foundation i command them to die every scorpion in your foundation i command them to die in the name of jesus i release the acts of god upon your foundation i release deliverance upon your foundation my god shall arise and every foundational witchcraft attacking you today, all of them shall die the death of sorrow in the name of Jesus. Every seed of witchcraft in your foundation, I command them to die in the name of Jesus. Every foundational confusion, I command them to die in the name of Jesus. 
I separate you from wasters and destroyers. I bring you to your destiny company in the name of Jesus. Blood of Jesus. Purge, purge, purge our foundation in the name of Jesus. I pray for you today that the Holy Spirit shall shake down every foundational stronghold in your life in the name of Jesus. Every foundational familiar spirit, I bind and cast them out of you in the name of Jesus. Every foundational marine power, I command them to clear out of your life in the name of Jesus. Every spirit that entered you through curses, through evil covenants, I command them to clear away from you now in the name of Jesus. Every seed of poverty in your foundation, every seed of hardship in your foundation, every plantation of poverty and hardship in your foundation, I command them to die now in the name of Jesus. Every foundational padlock, I command them to break over your life in the name of Jesus. Every problem attached to your family name, I neutralize those problems now in the name of Jesus and I command the owner of evil load to carry their evil loads out of your family line in the name of Jesus. Every problem that stands as Pharaoh, the rod of God shall swallow them in the name of Jesus. I decree today every legal right of satanic harassment, I command them to be destroyed today over your life in the matchless and most powerful name of Jesus and every power searching the oracle to know your progress to harm you i command those to die in the name of jesus and every family idol that has been disturbing you i command them to receive the consuming fire of god and die in the name of jesus and every dream poison i command them to jump out of your life in the name of jesus according to the mystery of elisha Today I smite the ground against your enemies. In the name of Jesus, I release you from any bondage present in your family line. In the mighty name of Jesus, any evil pattern laid by your ancestors, I break I break them now in the name of Jesus. No enchantment shall hold you captive. In the matchless and most powerful name of Jesus, I break the pattern of darkness that locked you up, locked your bloodline up. In the name of Jesus, I release your life from the yoke of your village, from the yoke of your environment, from the yoke of your continent. In the name of Jesus, I decree today, you shall begin to walk and live in liberty. In Jesus' matchless name we pray. Every cause that came to you through the sins of your ancestors, by the blood of Jesus, I wipe them away from you. And every ancestral transmission of affliction, I command them to break and die. In the name of Jesus, oh Lord, thank you for the answers of our prayers. Thank you for the great and wonderful things you have begun to do in our lives individually and corporately. Papa, fast track us from where we are to where we ought to be in the affairs of life. In Jesus' matchless name. And I pray for you, any label of darkness, any cloud of darkness around you, any hand of darkness around you, I command them to clear away forever in the name of Jesus. Remember, it is loving God, loving people, touching lives positively and serving our God. I am Fresh Fire. We are missionaries on assignment to connect the world with his love and his presence. In Jesus' matchless name. Amen. Thank you. Hello there. Are you worshiping with us for the first time? Congratulations. You are most welcome into this great gathering. This is no coincidence. We believe that your steps were ordered by God and He has a plan for you. You are now a candidate of God's revival. We are a generation called to worship the one true God. We do this in spirit and in truth, in kindness and in love, friction and teaching the word of God by the power of the Holy Spirit. Here your mind will be renewed as we connect you to God's presence and you are now transformed into a giant of a strange order. Welcome home.